Good evening, everyone. We're going to give it just a couple of minutes here to let, let people uh, log in and get situated and everything. Thanks for joining us for our new features masterclass tonight. A couple of housekeeping items before we really dive in. Your audio and video are turned off, so you don't have to worry about if there's noise in the background on your end, we can't see you or hear you. If you have any questions you'd like us to address during the class, we'll try to save some time for Q&A at the end. You drop them in the Q&A box. You've got two options for kind of sending messages to us in Zoom. There's a chat feature, and there's the Q&A. Drop them in the Q&A. It's just a lot easier for us to go through those and see those questions in the chat. Things tend to get lost. Chat's a great place to just say, hey, you know, checking in from wherever, um, talking with other folks in the class, things like that. This class is being recorded. So you will get an email tomorrow evening with a link to the recording. If you have to drop off early or you miss something and want to go back and watch it, it'll also be up on the Onyx Hunt YouTube channel sometime tomorrow, uh, probably early afternoon, depending on how fast YouTube can get it uploaded for us. So it looks like we've got quite a few people joining in now. Um, I think a short round of introductions is in order. My name is Jack Hedlund. Um, I'm kind of the, the master class, I don't know, guru sounds weird, but I handle the master class program Gordon. here at OnX. Um, so I'll be kind of your tour guide for tonight, but I've got two very smart individuals with me right now. To my left is Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Armantrout, um, and I am a product manager on the Hunt team. Uh, so responsible for defining new features, um, investigating different uh, problems that we need to solve, listen to all the feedback from customers, obviously, uh, to direct what we do, and then working with the engineering teams to uh, build the software that that y'all use um, when you when you get onto Onyx. And then we also have Gary on the line as well. Yep, good to be with you all this evening. Gary Schroeder, also a, a product manager for the Hunt app. Um, same kind of responsibilities Jeff has. I've got a particular focus on some of the non-Western markets, which we'll see a couple of those things tonight, but uh, good being with you all. Awesome. So we've got a, a pretty cool suite of features we're going to be highlighting today and kind of previewing some stuff. Some of the things we're going to talk about tonight are already out, are live in the app. You'll be able to mess around with them. We're also going to talk about some stuff that's about ready to come out here in the coming weeks and months. Um, so you'll get a, a sneak preview of some of the stuff we've been working on. First thing we're going to talk about tonight is some of our new aerial imagery options. We're going to talk about our new and improved compass mode slash kind of rangefinder feature. Gary's going to give us a deep dive into what we've been doing with trail cameras. And then with any remaining time, we're going to answer some Q&A. And then we're giving away some Onyx Hunt hats towards the end of the class to so make sure you stick around so that you can get entered for that giveaway. So for right now, I'm going to stop sharing this screen and then I'm gonna pull up my web map here at onxmaps.com so that you can follow along as we talk about new imagery. One moment while I get that pulled up. All right, so this is the Onyx web map. If you haven't used this before, it comes with your membership, with your account. You just go to onyxmaps.com log in with the same email address and password that you use on your phone app. Um, it's a it's a very similar program. You can see I got all my waypoints and everything there. It should look familiar to you. Um, if you have used it, that's all old news to you. The first thing I wanna talk about today is our recent imagery that we've come out with. Some of you might've played around with this already, but it's a pretty new feature. Most folks haven't discovered it yet. In the lower right-hand corner, I'm gonna go down to my base map button here. You can kind of see my cursor there. If I click on that, most people are used to seeing the 2D, 3D map, and then my satellite hybrid and topo options. What's brand new is this little guy down here that says recent imagery. So if I click that, you can see my map changes. So again, if I turn it off, turn it back on. What I'm actually gonna do, I found a really cool area to demo this. We're gonna go down to Wyoming so you can kind of see kind of in more stunning detail what this is all about. So we're kind of in Northwestern Wyoming here. You can see our 
kind of our normal standard aerial imagery, there's a lot of snow here in this portion of Wyoming. That's just when the flyover took place, there was a bunch of snow in the mountains. With our recent imagery, I can turn that on, and that was taken within the last two weeks, right? Yes. So this was taken within the last couple of weeks. We can see a whole lot less snow down here. It gives you the dates down at the bottom. Somewhere be between July 10th and July 24th, this image was taken. So I can zoom in a little bit. You will notice it is lower resolution. Um, it's not quite as detailed as our regular aerial imagery is. So as you zoom in, it does get a little bit fuzzy, a little bit sooner than our regular imagery does. But it's a great way, I mean, to check the obvious case here is snow cover. But you could check in the fall, see what the leaves look like, have the leaves dropped um, in an area, what water might be looking like if there's flooding or something like that. Um, if crops have come out of fields, things like that. What am I forgetting? Well, or the opposite of that case, I'm headed down to Nevada in a couple of weeks on an early mule deer hunt. So I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be using this specific imagery to look for areas that are greener than other areas as an indicator of the presence of water mm -hmm. that uh, uh, now in years past, that'd be a bigger deal. It seems like they had a ton of snow down there this year, but uh, so it's less of a problem, but uh, looking for those different colorations that you would see the, the greener areas would, would be an indicator of potential water source and something to maybe check out once you get boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And what you can also do with this recent imagery is you can go back in time you see I've got some arrows down here. And if I click that, it's going to go back to the previous two weeks, so June 26th to July 10th. And as I go back, I would expect to see, you know, more and more snow the farther we go. So this goes back to March of this year, correct? Correct. correct. So this will be super useful as we go through time, as we build up kind of a library of images. You'll be able to look back, you know, hey, what did this look like last summer? You know, and, and as we get more years under the belt, we'll have more and more data. That's going to be super interesting to be able to look back and say, all right, this period in May, for example, what did it look like last year and the year before and the year before that? Um, so right now you're able to go back to March 2023. And every time, every two weeks, basically, we're adding another image to that look back there. We're working with our supplier to uh, try to obtain some imagery that goes back to, this, to March of 2022 as well. So hopefully we add a, another year's worth of imagery here shortly um, so that you can really compare year over year. But uh, yeah, every two weeks, we update all this imagery nationwide um, so you can so you can see the, the absolute current conditions on the ground. And I did just notice this pop up on my phone app as well. Mm -hmm. It's coming, it's coming shortly for phone. Uh, both Android and iOS will have this as well, uh, along with the look back feature. We're rolling that out uh, a little bit more slowly than we did on the web, but but you should see that very shortly on on both iOS and Android. So be able to turn this on and use your phone, you know, just as as Jack has demoed on the web just now. Yep. Yeah. So for right now, this is just on your web map. If you're looking on your app, you might not see it yet, but that will be coming soon. Awesome. Let me get back to Missoula here. There we go. So I'm back to Missoula here. Let's say I wanted to get a super detailed, super recent image of my hunting area. So that's another new imagery option we've released. We call it imagery on demand. So if you see my cursor up here in the kind of upper right hand corner in the toolbar, this button that looks kind of like a satellite here. If I click on that, that's going to open up the imagery on demand kind of. Uh, what do we call that? Like an ordering an intro card. Yeah. Yep. So what this allows me to do, I'm in Missoula, Montana, sitting in our office here, but let's say I want to know, I don't know, just pick an area. Let's go up to the Rocky Mountain front. Let's say I want to go hunting up there this year and I want to know what the area looks like right now. I'm just going to zoom in, pick a random spot. This is an area you hunt. I've never been in a high anybody's secret spot or anything like that. But I'm going to go to choose map area. And now I'm going to get this kind of circle in there. So what that is showing is that's my target area for this custom high definition, very recent image 
that I'm going to order of this area. So wherever I want to make sure, you know, I want to make for sure this area is included. I'm going to put that cross here kind of on the center of that area. I can name my map area. I'm just going to name it Rocky Mountain Front. And then I can add to my cart. So what's going to happen once you place an order here is, what is the timeline? Within two weeks? Yeah, we um, we will shoot and deliver the image back just to your Onyx map. No, nobody else's. It's your image. It belongs to you. It's on your map only. Um, and the timeline that we've been guaranteed by our uh, satellite provider is 14 days. Um, what I can say is uh, this has been live since early May, and we're averaging just over five days now per image. So uh, the turnaround time is is pretty quick. I've seen one uh, that took two hours. Uh, that's wow. probably unusual. I wouldn't <laughs> expect that. Um, there are some that will take the full 14 days, but but in general, at, we're averaging uh, pretty quick turnaround times on these. We actually send whatever coordinates you give us here through this, this crosshairs that you see in the middle of your screen. We send those to the satellite supplier and they actually schedule a satellite to fly over that area and take a picture just for you. Um, and so this is an upcharge um, because of the cost of doing this, um, but uh, we've tried to price it as reasonably as we, we can. Uh, in the private market, you're going to you're going to pay hundreds of dollars for these images, and so we think we have a pretty reasonable uh, price for uh, for for y'all to use to uh, get a, a really recent uh, view of the actual conditions before you go into a hunt. So if you're driving, if you have to drive, you know, four hours to get to a spot, um, you know, maybe maybe a week or so before you go, you schedule one of these just so you can see conditions. You can see as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. crops that have been harvested, you know, whatever, all kinds of stuff, uh, you'll be able to see through these images. So it's, uh, yeah, it could be super useful. I was just thinking about your Nevada mule deer hunt. Yeah, You might same. do that to see what same. the moisture looks like. I, I ordered an image the <laughs> other, uh, just three days ago. So, Perfect. Yeah. And so, um, like we said, you'll, you'll place your order. It could take up to two weeks. You're going to want to make sure you give yourself enough time if you're ordering it the day before you head to Colorado for an elk hunt and hoping that it'll be there, it might be, but I wouldn't bank on that. So make sure you, you do order it well enough ahead of time. And if there is cloud cover, yeah. right? If there's too much, you know, when they do the flyover, if there's too much, too many clouds, or I suppose even like wildfire smoke might obscure it, what happens yep. then? Yep. So what will happen is we will set up, uh, when we send the order to our supplier, we'll set a maximum cloud score percent. And they have software that evaluates the images and determines uh, what the cloud cover is. If it exceeds that number, then they will uh, not send us the image. They will keep trying. If it's cloudy for a few days, they will keep trying until that 14-day time period runs out. And at that point in time, if they still have not been able to capture the image and we don't have it back, we will immediately refund you the, the, uh, the cost that you paid for the image, and then uh, you will see that show up in, in the same card that Jack has pulled up on his on his sheet. There's a separate tab there called My Imagery, which um, will give you the indicator of uh, the open status of, of any order that you have, and then we'll refund you your money immediately, and then, um, you know, welcome to go back in and try again. Um, you know, it might help to maybe take a quick look at the 10-day forecast for the area that you want to order an image for. If you see you know, tons of thunderstorms and whatever else, or hurricanes coming through if you're in the Southeast, whatever it is, you know, maybe that's not the best time to, to order one because we can't take pictures through clouds. But uh, other than that, um, you know, we've, it's, it's been, it's been working really good. Awesome. So those are two features that are available for you to check out right now. We also have some exciting new imagery coming mostly east of the Mississippi. Yes. Coming up a little bit later this year. What's going on there? Yeah, so Gary can also talk about this because this is also a, a focus of his. But um, in, in the eastern U.S. where there are uh, obviously primarily more deciduous forests, we're working to source leaf off imagery. We've heard that request from, from lots of y'all over, uh, over a period of time. So 
We're going to uh, source leaf off imagery. Uh, I think we have 13 states that we've ingested so far. We're working on uh, about another eight more. Um, and we're focusing on uh, areas uh, in the eastern U.S., primarily whitetail country, uh, so we can give yet another imagery option in that card that you just saw Jack pull up on WebMap, so that you can so you can see conditions on the ground and not just a, a sea of green leaves. So that's that's going to be the purpose there. Um, we should have that uh, later this year for sure. Um, it'll start it'll start showing up uh, on web first, probably just as you as you saw the demo on the, the recent and historical imagery, it'll show up on web first, but then uh, we'll quickly follow to, um, to your phones. We will have embedded with that a little uh, graphic by state that will show you uh, where leaf off is available and, and where it is not so that you can see at a glance um, what we have available now. We'll indicate on that graphic as well what's coming soon. Uh, that doesn't help you that much if you're in an area that we don't quite cover yet, but at least if you're in an area that is covered, is labeled coming soon, you'll know that, that we're at least working on it. So uh, that'll be coming later on this fall. So keep a look out uh, for that again on WebMap first and then mobile. Let's do, there's a couple questions in here before we move on to compass mode. Um, the recent imagery, there's a few people mentioning they didn't have it. If you're not seeing that, um, you know, make sure you are on the most up-to-date version all the time. That's something to, to take a look at. It's also elite only. So if you don't have an elite membership, that's not an option for you right now. So if you have the premium, if you have the one state, you're not going to see that um, on your end. That's that's an elite, um, an elite feature there. So that might explain why some folks were not seeing it. Yeah. Um, question here on does the does the recent imagery show the date the image was taken? It gives you kind of a two week window. It doesn't give you the exact date it was taken, but if you if you remember back to when I was showing my map there, along the bottom, it'll give you kind of that two week window to give you an idea of when that image was taken. Yeah, and the reason we can't we can't show an exact date is the the way that imagery is shot via satellite. It's thousands of images that that cover the whole United States. And it takes multiple satellite flights over multiple days to shoot all those different images. And then our supplier has software that, that glues all that stuff together so that you see one continuous map on Onyx, but it comes to us as little squares. And uh, each of those could potentially have a different date when it was shot. There's, there's no way to know once all the software sort of builds all that mosaic together. And so all we can really give you is a, is a two week range within which all of the imagery in that, uh, in that view has been shot, if that, if that makes sense or helps any. Mm -hmm. Couple imagery on demand questions. Um, what's the cost? Right, it's uh, $59.95 right now. Um, and that's one thing we're experimenting with, but uh, right now $60 per image, again, there's cloud cover, we refund that, but um, but right now it's it's sixty dollars. And is there any limit to how many orders I can place? Nope. You can order. Nope. Nope. We've heard from land managers and other folks who want to who have big projects that are going on in specific areas of land where they might want to take an image every week or two weeks to keep up with progress on controlled burns or food plots or whatever thinning, whatever else you're doing on your land. Um, and, uh, so they're going to be, they're going to be placing a whole bunch of orders. Uh, but no, there's no, there's no limit on orders. Each of the images will show up on that little screen that Jack showed. Um, and you'll be able to turn those on and off, uh, for, for, uh, if you don't want to see, if you want to go back to, you know, the base imagery, same thing on your mobile, you'll start seeing those on your mobile as well. That's released now. And underneath the tools menu in your mobile app will be an imagery on demand, that little satellite icon that you, should, you saw Jack uh, click on. You can click on that and you'll be able to turn your image on and off right from there. Um, just a couple questions on seeing an, an example. I unfortunately don't have an image on demand example on this account, so that's on me. I should have thought ahead and ordered one up so that I could show an example. So next time I'll be more prepared. Um, and I think you mentioned this, but we'll go over it one more time. IOD image on demand will also be available on the mobile app down the road. Correct. correct. You won't be able to order from your mobile, um, but 
uh, all of the capabilities that exist other than ordering. So being, being able to view it, turn it on and off, you know, zoom in and out, all your uh, hybrid topo lines, waypoints, 3D, everything that you expect uh, out of Onyx imagery will function with your IOD image as well. So you'll be able to see it in 3D. You can uh, do everything. If you have waypoints in that specific area that you shoot, all those are going to show up exactly where you expect them to be. Um, and all that will be on mobile as well. You just won't be able to place the order itself. Awesome. Well, let's jump over to compass mode. I'm going to share my phone screen here because this is a mobile uh, mobile feature here. So one moment while I pull that up. Get over here. That's the wrong button. All right. So you can see I've got the Onyx Hunt app pulled up on my phone here. I can see my blue location dot in the office here. So if I want to open up compass mode, what I do in the lower right-hand corner, there's that blue dot, looks kind of like a crosshairs. I tap that, it turns to an arrow, and I can see my sight cone coming off of my blue dot there. So this is this should be familiar if you've used Onyx in the past. This We've had this feature for as long as I can remember. Um, I've had Onyx you know, for years before I started working here. Um, so this is this is nothing new. As I move my phone around, I can see what direction I'm facing. What's cool is this compass button that's right above my base map selector, again, in the lower right-hand corner there. If I tap that, you can see our new compass mode here. So I still have my sight cone, but now at the top of the map, I can see my bearing. I can get kind of a rough degrees if I know I need to head, you know, 180 degrees heading south, I'm going to orient the map that direction. So that's been a request we've gotten from people of, hey, I want to be able to take a compass bearing in the app and, and be able to follow that. So now you can do that if you'd like to go that route. What's most exciting for me is if I tap this range finder button here above my base map selector. So now you can see I have looks kind of like a waypoint icon. It says 52 yards there. What this is useful for is, let's say I always use the example, I'm a big bear hunter in the spring. I love bear hunting. I range a bear. I see, see a bear. It's across the canyon. I range it, and it's 382 yards, let's just say. Okay, that's maybe a makeable shot for me. Maybe I want to get a little, little bit closer, depending on the situation. But I would like to have a spot on my map where that bear was located. This could be an elk in the fall. This could be a deer. This could be whatever. So 382 yards, I'm going to extend this out. And obviously we're in Midtown Missoula right here. So bear with me on this hypothetical. We can't all, really do this all mountains. Yeah, all Jack is doing now is dragging his thumb uh, up and down the screen. So if you drag your thumb up to the top of the mm -hmm. screen, we're gonna automatically zoom in the map so that uh, you get a you get a longer, longer distance. You can see further like that. If he drags his screen all the or his thumb all the way down to the bottom of the screen, then it's going to start zooming in as well, mm -hmm. uh, so that you can get uh, a closer distance if you want. So, uh, yeah, it's just a single thumb swipe up and down on the screen will move that waypoint line in and out. Yep. So let me get it. And and what you can do because sometimes you're a little bit shaky. You can see my phone is still moving around. I can get my phone pointed in the correct direction, and then tap that lock button at the bottom. Now you can see I'm moving my phone around. It stays locked so that I can keep it exactly where I want that, that line to be. 383 yards, I tap that waypoint button. I can go in and edit it if I want. In the heat of the moment, if I'm on a stock, I'm probably just going to leave it and hit the done button. Now I have a waypoint on that location. So useful for planning a stock. Also super useful for after the shot. We've all done it where, whether we're deer hunting from a tree stand in thick woods, whether we're hunting the mountains and we need to go across a creek bottom or a canyon to get to where we shot, it always looks different once you get there. So what I like to do is, you know, I should know the range that I shot at if I ranged it beforehand. I can do that exact same process 
Um, you know, let's say this was an instance where I didn't need to plant a stock. The deer was at 150 yards. I'm comfortable shooting. Did that. Deer ran off. I need the blood trail. I'll put that waypoint at 150 yards. That way, as I walk down there, as things look totally different, once you get that different perspective, I at least have a starting point where I'm going to start my blood trail. Um, what other, any other scenarios I'm well, forgetting here? Yeah, you'll notice once you drop that waypoint, you still have the icon there and you can still use that to drop additional waypoints if you choose. So in Jack's scenario, if he, if he shoots at that bear that's 382 yards away, bear runs off um, and you can, you can now unlock the screen. Oh, he ran, you know, whatever he ran to the west and he went around that whatever some object that you can see with your eyes you can find that object on your map now you can drop another waypoint where you think he went so now you sort of have this this ability to know a where was he when when you shot him and then b where was the last time you saw him from your position right there and now to jack's point when you get up there and everything looks totally different you'll be able to have some frame of reference of sort of where where do you start looking and and where did he disappear to um th those would be uh those could be super useful in the field as well you'll notice on the side also there's uh range tick marks so that you can get an idea you know if, even if you're not dropping waypoints or something if you just are looking on the map and comparing what you're seeing to uh, to what you see on your map you can get an idea immediately of how far away something is perhaps uh, just by using the range ticks on the side of the screen there. Of course, those correspond with the with the lines across your line of sight and uh, direction of travel too. Yeah, so what Jeff has mentioned there is on the left-hand side where you can see it says 307 yards, 615. It's kind of moving as I'm moving my map here um, so that you can get just kind of at a glance, see what the distance is there. Yep. And then... Uh, you're probably going to cover this part, but you can hit the exit button. Obviously, it gets you out of this mode. You drop waypoints, so obviously you're still going to see those. If you want to get into it quicker, you can hit the tools button. And in tools, you will see uh, compass mode down there on the bottom. Yep, that one. Yep. And you can tap and go straight to this mode. So you don't have to play around with the bottom uh, crosshairs button, hitting that a couple of times. Just go to tools, hit compass mode, boom it launches you right into the spot. That's a good tip. I always forget that. And I do the shortcut, the long way yeah. into it. <laughs> and then, so that's that's available right now for folks, correct? It is correct. And then we do have some exciting stuff. I don't know how much we can talk about, but what might be coming down the road for this later? Um, can't really talk about some of it, but we do show a rangefinder icon there. So I'll just kind of leave it at that That's... and you know so uh but yeah we're working on some really cool stuff uh with some partners um that hopefully uh all y'all be seeing really soon yeah yeah so this is kind of the the maybe the first iteration of it we're yep. going to continue to build on this and add more more rich features to it that i think everybody's going to be pretty stoked on yep yep yeah, what we've heard from from all y'all is, you know, oh, this is great. I can manually drop waypoints, but when, when will I be able to do that automatically from maybe some other device I might have with me? Uh, and so we're listening to your feedback and we're working on that as well. So, so let's do before we get into trail cameras and kick it over to Gary. A couple questions here: Does the rangefinder work in offline mode? It should. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um. Is that available on a premium membership? Uh, yes, this is. Yep. So no matter what membership level you have, premium or elite, you have access to this new compass mode here. Yep. Let's see what else. Question, how do I get the rangefinder to show up on my app? Um, so first, make sure you are on the most up-to-date version. If you haven't updated your Onyx app in a little while, it might not be showing there for you. But you can go, let me exit it here. The fastest way to pull up the rangefinder mode again is to go into tools, tap comp compass mode, and then I can tap that rangefinder there, and then you're into it. All right. I want to get to, can, sorry, go by, ahead. by the way, I, I don't know if that's that question, but it, um, 
if you do have the latest version of the app and you do not see compass mode in your app, uh, please reach out to our customer service folks and we will get you squared away because something something strange will be going on. Uh, that one that one should be out to everyone now. Perfect. All right, I think we'll come back to some of these questions, but I wanted to kick it over to Gary. He's going to talk about some of the new trail camera um, features that we've built out this year, some that are available and some that are still still coming. Yep, appreciate it, Jack. Um, before I kind of show what we have in the product today and talk through some of the things we're, that are coming up next, I think folks that, that run cameras and maybe in the, in the chat, you all can tell us if you're running trail cameras and what brands you're running, that kind of thing, that'd be good for us to know. Uh, but broadly, if we look at the market, we see folks using just the two different main types of cameras, you know, kind of SD, what I would call SD cameras. You take the picture, stores it on the, the local device. And then a lot of folks are running cell cameras for sure. So take the pictures, but then send those images over uh, to, to the app that you're using. So I wanted to talk through a little bit about what we're doing for sort of the first half of that, the, the SD side, and then mention briefly a little bit on the cell cam side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Jack, you can let me know when you all can see that. Yep, looks good. All right. Um, okay, let me maximize this. All right, so this is available now on web, all the things I'm going to show here today. And you'll see this in the mobile apps uh, later this summer and early fall. So uh, if I show you uh, over here on the left, you can see uh, kind of an icon here that says trail cameras. Now you can access this uh, in the toolbar as well, but I'll start here with the left side uh, for, for today. Um, what I have showing here are already some cameras that I created. And I think we have time tonight and I can go ahead and walk you through creating a, a camera as well. Uh, but just on this screen, one of the things uh, we've heard from all of y'all that run cameras is that we really want one place to manage all my cameras. And all my cameras means your SD cameras, it means your cell cameras, it means your cameras that are in the field, and it means your cameras that are not in the field. So the first thing you'll see, or one of the things you'll see on this screen, hopefully you can see it through the screen share on the top, it says in field, and on the bottom it says not in field. And so again, that's just trying to help folks have one place to organize all the cameras, I've got a camera in my office here that would be in a not in field status, whereas the other ones would be uh, in the field. Uh, I'll click into one of these cameras so you can see a lot of the, the data that we capture um, on the cameras and then we can create one. So if I look at this, I click into that camera right away, you can see that one was one in the field and it zoomed to that location. And so at the top here, you'll have kind of what we call a nickname of the camera as well as your brand and the model. And of course the coordinates, like everything is integrated there with the map. Um, but one of the things that we thought was quite uh, useful for folks based on feedback is, especially again on the SD cameras where you're not getting any camera data transmitted to you, is the ability to set, when was the last time you changed the batteries in that camera? When was the last time you changed the SD card of that camera and how long that camera has been at its current location. So you can see uh, some of that data here. So let me walk you through uh, creating a camera and some of the other fields that we have. So for this demo, I'm just gonna call this one the East Field. I'm gonna put in a Bushnell camera for uh, today. Uh, I'm just gonna put in a test uh, just for the model number. Of course, you put the model of your specific camera there. Then again, like we said, that one-stop shop for all your cameras, you can designate it SD or cellular. I'm gonna do that. Battery count, capacity, and then my color, of course. And, and down here, if you have notes that you're interested in keeping track of for a particular camera, you can do that for you. A lot of folks that have been using waypoints to manage trail cameras would use notes to indicate where those cameras had been historically, meaning I put it on the south food plot for the, this time period, then I moved it over to the east side for that time period. I want to show you something in a little bit where you don't need to do that anymore in the notes field, but it's still there if you want to add other notes. 
So when I create uh, click next there, we have that same designation I mentioned earlier, either in field or not in field. Let's figure out where we want to place uh, this camera here. Maybe we'll come into sort of Mississippi area, try to place it over on this edge habitat here. So we'll put in field. So then you see the marker on your map. Again, uh, those fields I mentioned earlier, uh, battery, SD card, and location, all important to track the dates, uh, just so you have that holistic inventory. So if you're just using this uh, in Onyx today for the first time, you may already have cameras in the field. So if you drop that camera, you drop this pin of the camera right now, and we only had today's date, it wouldn't accurately, accurately reflect the history of that camera. So you can come in here and say, when was this trail camera placed here? Maybe I did that back towards the end of April. Um, maybe I have a location name that's in addition uh, to the nickname of the camera. Let's just call that the South Food Plot for today. Uh, one of the things for folks that may not be uh, uh, super experienced with running trail cameras is we have some in-app education which lets you know kind of maybe you should set the orientation of those cameras facing north so you don't get a lot of sun uh, overexposing images and how you might want to orient those to game trails. So that's useful uh, for some folks. But then that ties directly into what we have at the bottom here, which says what direction is your camera facing? And again, if you want to go ahead and make sure that it's facing north, uh, you'll put north there and you'll see uh, as I zoom in over here, the north direction showing up on the pin. Uh, if you've seen wind on a waypoint, things like that, other features in Onyx, uh, you'll, that would be familiar to you. If I switch it to east, uh, northeast, it, it changes with it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And like I mentioned, I'll just be brief here. If you want to update the times when you last updated your batteries, you can go ahead and do that uh, there as well as your SD card. Sometimes people will change the capacity of their SD card. So we you can update that here. Again, just to make sure you have the most accurate uh, inventory and the most accurate state or status of your cameras possible. Um, and I'll just say that I last changed this card back in June. Um, one of the things I wanna show earlier or now is what I mentioned earlier about uh, no longer really needing the notes field to track uh, what you might call the history of a camera. So if I come up here and every camera has this, and it's also uh, on the, the other panel where it shows all your cameras, is you have a history tab. And current history, since we just created, it, has one, what we call one placement. But if I wanted to come down here and move this camera to this side of the field, I'll keep the direction facing the same. I can save that um, placement. So I've moved it on the map. You've only moved it once. It's only showing up kind of once on the map. So you don't have map clutter. But if you go into history, only when you're in that tab or in that status, if you will, it'll show this gray pin here. Uh, and it will show the list view of how, where you've moved that uh, camera in the past. And so you could, of course, name these as you go forward, uh, but in this case, I didn't. So the first placement was down here, this gray one, and the current one, if you can see that highlighting that magenta color in the upper right, and it'll have the, the dates, uh, the starting date and the end date of that placement. So that is for individual cameras as well as all of your cameras. So I have a ton of different cameras that I've had in here. Some of them have been deleted, so it shows those deletions there at the bottom. Uh, the last thing I'll talk through for time's sake here is, of course, your photos. And so uh, for SD cameras, you want to upload all of your images. We have all of that available to you here. Um, one of the things that will become more and more valuable with this feature that I just want to kind of mention it now is that, like I mentioned with history, uh, you, you might have one camera that has multiple different placements throughout a whole season or multiple season, and it has taken pictures at different places throughout its life, if you will. Well, if you're trying to figure out as you're going through and looking through all of your historic images and you're looking at this one buck, let's say that daylighted, and you're like, where exactly was that again? Maybe you can't tell from the terrain in the image and, you, and you're not sure like the camera, the picture that you're looking at was taken at a location that the camera is not currently at. It was taken at a previous or historic placement. 
Well, one of the things we're doing with photos based on that time range of the placements is we can look at the timestamp of the image and reference that with the timestamp of the placement and make sure those, those pair together. So then you're always gonna have an accurate view of where the images were taken based on what camera was taken. But even if that the camera is not at the current location that the image was taken. So I'll go through here and we can look at the images that were taken here. We have different data related to the camera, when it was taken, when it was uploaded. So you can have, again, that holistic view of your images. And uh, maybe I'll stop there for, for this demo, but a couple of things I wanted to um, mention, uh, let's go ahead and stop this here, is that uh, with a camera and with those images, you have the location, which I mentioned, and then you also have the timestamp. And obviously with those two pieces of information, uh, we can start showing you all the, uh, what I would call weather or environmental factors that were present when that picture was taken. So again, when you're looking through your images and you're saying, that's my target buck for this season, you might wanna say, well, look, that buck only daylighted when the temperature was between these ranges and when the, those, the wind was out of a certain direction. We'll start to be showing you that in the app in the fall. Um, and the last thing I'll mention, turn it over to you, Jack, is sort of the other side, how I began of like the trail camera industry or capabilities is the cell camera side. And so I know, I think a lot of folks in the comments said they were running cell cams as well. So we are partnering with some of the leading trail and cellular camera companies in the industry to integrate the images from those apps and from those providers into Onyx. And that's gonna be coming uh, to the Onyx Hunt app this season. So I'll turn it back over to you guys. Awesome. Well, a couple questions here, um, you know, in the Q&A. Dan asks, can cameras be shared across multiple users? So let's say Jeff and I have a deer lease together and I'm kind of the one out running the cameras. Can I share that with him so that he's able to, you know, partake in the same intel? That's a great question and definitely been asked that as well. Not today, but that's something we've heard loud and clear and we'll be working on that to get folks that are sharing cameras and also a lot of a lot of feedback we got that you know I don't necessarily want to just share the whole camera so I so to see all the images but certain select images uh, as well so those are those are things we're working on as well. Awesome. Um, trail camera, some of that stuff you just demoed is that for premium and elite, just elite. Who who has access to that right now? Premium and elite. So if you log into your web account right now, you should see what I showed. Perfect. Um, and then Conrad asks, can you delete an individual camera placement within the history? So I think this might be getting at maybe I lose permission on a property and none of those historic placements are useful to me anymore, or I change leases or something like that. Do you have that option? The option to delete a camera, but not yet an individual history. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to jump back to my presentation here. We're going to get to our giveaway and then do some, some final Q&A and we'll wrap this up. So let me share my screen here. One moment. So we are, I did mention it earlier, we're giving away 10 Onyx Hunt hats tonight. Um, I'm going to post that in the chat right now. I'll post that link. So everybody has, um, the giveaway closes at midnight tonight. So if you're watching this on YouTube after, what is today? The 27th of July, 2023. If you're watching it afterwards, I'm sorry, the giveaway has closed. Um, but everybody who's here is watching live, make sure you get entered there. We'll pull those winners tomorrow. I'll send you an email letting you know you've won. We'll get those hats sent out to you. Our shipping department usually gets those out within, usually within the same day, if not the day after, and then it'll get sent out to you. So make sure you enter to win that. And we do giveaways just about every one of our classes. So if this is your first one and you like winning free stuff, we hope to see you on a, a future class. So we'll go back into the Q&A. I should probably stop sharing. There we go. Um, normally I have somebody kind of triaging these for me, but we didn't have anybody in the background today. So I'm just gonna go through um, some of these. Where do I find the trail camera icon? So if you are 
on, let me, I might as well just jump into web map here. I can show you where that is. So if you are on your onyxmaps.com, on your computer, on your web map, I'm gonna go to the left-hand side here. You see where it says trail cameras, click on that. I don't have any trail cameras on this, it's just a, a tester account I do for these master classes. But let's say I wanted to add one, I could certainly do that. I clicked the wrong button there. But that's how you get into it. I can name my trail camera. You know, it's Bushnell. I can do all that stuff that Gary Gary demoed earlier. Man, you guys are making me answer all these questions. And there it is. So that's that's kind of the quick and dirty of how you get in there and put that in. Obviously, I would, if this was an actual camera, I would put in, you know, the batteries and the SD card and all that stuff that, that Gary talked about earlier. So that's how you get into there. Yep, can you think of anything we missed or anything? No, not that we didn't cover today or in, in a, the last couple of master classes. Okay. A you know. um, few questions about cell trail cam photos. Can they go, can they be piped right to the app? Um, today, the answer is no, but in the future, the answer to that question will very likely be different. I don't know how much we're comfortable saying, Gary, but. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jack. Like I mentioned, we are partnering with some of the leading cellular trail camera companies in the industry to do exactly that. So if you had an account with them and you have an account with us, those images would, as you say, pipe into your Onyx Hunt app. So you have all those images there in the app. Lee says he needs the leaf off as soon as possible. So, okay, Jeff, will get on that for you. <laughs> all right, we will get on that. Um, I did see a couple people mention they didn't have the trail camera icon there. Um, you may need to, I guess you maybe need to log out, maybe clear your browser history. Um, that can sometimes clear things up for you. If anybody does, we should have mentioned this at the top of the class. If anybody does have issues with any of the, you know, features we demoed tonight or anything else in general, billing questions, you need to reset a password, anything like that. Our customer support team is... Obviously, I'm biased, but second to none, they're the best. Yes. Um, you know, most of them are based right here in Montana. You can give us a call, or the probably the best way for them to help you is via email. The email address for our customer support is help at onyxmaps.com. So any of the stuff that we demoed today, if you have questions on it, um, if it's not working like you think it should, or anything else in the app, they answer every email within you know, 24 business days. So if you email them tonight, you can expect an email tomorrow before five o'clock mountain time, they'll get back to you and, and you guys can get hooked up that way and, and talk through any issues that you have. Let me go through um, questions about is the camera, you know, being able to set trail cameras gonna be added to the phone app? I assume the answer to that is yes, Gary. 100% yes, just coming a little bit later this season. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want you, you know, because that's going to be, you're going to have your phone on you when you're setting trail cameras. We understand that you're going to want to be able to kind of do all that stuff quite often when you're out in the field, maybe. So, so that will be coming to the phone app eventually. Let's see. Let's try to find one more. Um, somebody did mention their compass mode being off. One thing to check is the compass on your phone. So what we do is we will kind of tap into the compass that's built into your phone there. I have an iPhone, I think this is an 11, and I've had issues with my compass, the compass app, you know, the native one that comes with your phone being off. If that's off, the OnX one is gonna mirror that. So sometimes mine will get off by like 90 degrees. And it's, it's an iPhone thing that happens to them sometimes. You can go into your settings and perform a compass calibration. Um, I don't remember the exact steps right now. We do have that. You know, our customer support team can walk you through that. I believe we have an FAQ on that as well, or do what everybody kind of does in 2023, Google iPhone 11 compass calibration. It'll walk you through that. I've had to do that. Um, you know, it's not an on X thing that's broken. It's kind of with the hardware on your phone. So if you're, if you're seeing the compass is off, a little bit or off from what you think it should be showing, uh, check that calibration. That's the first thing I would do. That's the most likely culprit. 
Um, question about images, Gary. Is there a limit as as far as how many images images I can attach to a specific trail camera? Yeah, good question. No limit right now. So get in and start uploading images. We're working through all the images, uh, kind of the thresholds and things as the fall progresses. Perfect. Well, I think that's that's a good ending point for us. Again, if you have any questions, help at onyxmaps.com. Um, if you want to rewatch this, we'll have it up on the YouTube channel. Today's July 27th. We'll have it up July 28th, and everybody will get an email um, with the recording as well. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, and I want to thank Jeff and Gary for joining me on here and lending their expertise. Of course. All right. All right. Have a good night, everybody. See you, everybody.